superhumans. I'm, in this talk, I'm going to talk about superhumans. I'm going to talk about the definition. What is a superhuman? What are superhumans? Also the abilities, seven types of abilities of superhumans. And also I'm going to dive into the origins or the sources of superhuman technology. So stay tight and maybe you are going to learn how you can become a superhuman yourself. All right, folks, I want to start with a small exercise. I want to demonstrate my own superhuman mind reading capabilities to you. You're ready? I want you to grab your calculator or maybe if you have some great math skills, you can also do it in your head. But I want to start that you pick a number between 0 and 99. So pick a number between 0 and 99 and write it down or put it in your calculator. Then I want you to multiply that number by 2. So multiply that number by 2. Got it? All right. Then add 10 to that number. So add 10 to that number. Now you can divide it by 2 again. Got it? And now I want you do you have a new number and I want the you to subtract the first number where you got it in the beginning the first number you subtract it from the number you have right now. Yes? All right. Now I'm doing my superhuman mind reading capabilities and you got the number five right well you might know this it's a little algebra or a little math trick and uh, there's nothing superhuman about me um, but i want to introduce you into the topic of superhumans because my name is peter joosten i'm from the netherlands and I'm an expert in the field of human augmentation, human enhancement, transhumanism and biohacking. And if you're interested in, hey Peter, what's, what are the differences between all these terms? You can go to my website superhumantalks.com. There you can find blog posts, YouTube channel, but also if you want to have more in-depth knowledge, you can also book me for a consultancy session, maybe for a webinar, a keynote, these kinds of things. So you can go to superhumantalks.com and there you can also find an explainer that's a free download on the superhuman era. So in this talk I'm going to talk about the definition of a superhuman. I'm going to give you examples of seven categories of superhuman abilities. And I will talk about the main origins of superhuman technologies. So to start with the definition of a superhuman. Did you know that the oldest story in the world is already about superhumans? Or I should say a superhuman. The Epos of Gilgamesh is the oldest story in the world. Uh, and it's in the current country of Iraq. Um, they found tablets with this story which are made up of poems. And it's interesting because that story is way older than the Bible, the Bhagata Vita, uh, the Greek Iliad, for example, and it's about the Epos of Gilgamesh. It's about Epos. It's about Gilgamesh, of course. And Gilgamesh is already superhuman because he's two-thirds god and he's one-third human, and he battles with um, all kinds of divine animals and he wins. But at some point, he loses his best friend Enkidu, and that's when. Gilgamesh decides to go on a quest and the quest is to come up with uh, a source against uh, for longevity so he can become immortal he will never die again and it's interesting because our longing for superhumans is something that's in us as humans from the beginning of times as you can see in uh, Gilgam Gilgamesh, but also of course in the Iliad and other Roman myths, they're all about a divine intervention, intervention or godlike um, capabilities that are gifted to some lucky humans, you might say. 
And of course, nowadays we are in a different era. For example, take the idea of Ghost in the Shell. It's an anime from 1995, also made into a Hollywood movie in 2015 or 17, if I might remember, with Scarlett Johansson. And this, in this movie, the main character, Major, she is also being built as a superhuman. She's part human, part machine, also with the role of AI. So there you can already see the difference between not only sort of godlike interventions to make us superhuman, but with the use of science and technology, we can become superhumans ourselves. But what's interesting is that the story of Ghost in the Shell is not only uh, the story is not, not, not the first story in which you superhumans are made from science and technology. The first one was actually Frankenstein. In 1818, Mary Shelley wrote the story of Frankenstein. Uh, a major misconception is that the name of the monster is Frankenstein, but that's not the case. The Victor Frankenstein is a doctor, uh, and that's why the story is the story of Frankenstein. And that was the, uh, a nice anecdote is that at the time Mary Shelley wrote this story, they were developing a new technology called electricity. And she saw a demonstration of electricity and lightning. And in a way that kind of inspired her to come up with the story about Frankenstein and he, how Frankenstein made pieces of dead bodies and then used electricity and sparks and lightning to bring the new body back to life. So that's also something you might re remember if you're watching current science fiction or read current stories about uh, like the Avengers. Uh, they're all based on our current time and our current technology uh, and that also has a major influence about how we think about superhuman capabilities. So what are some superhuman abilities? I want to give you seven. Uh, cognition, strength, health, emotion, spiritual, moral, and new senses. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples in each category. So first of all, of course, is cognition. And you, you might think of the Limitless movie with Robert De Niro and Bradley Cooper, where they pop a pill and then he can expand his cognition, his memory, his focus, there's also current pills on the market called nootropics and they in a way um, gi can give you this uh, cognition boost but it's not the same effect as you might remember from the movie with NCT48. So that's the first one, intelligence. The second one is where we can also have superhuman abilities in our strength. Uh, for example, think of the rock. You can also think of speed, stamina, these kinds of things, endurance, of course. And that's also where a lot of people think when they hear the term superhuman. They think about or either cognition or strength. But that's not the only case. Because the third category is that we also can maybe have superhuman health. Um, and you might think of movies like uh, Highlander or Alter the Carbon on Netflix, where you have science and technology then make you to live longer maybe just like in the movie of Gilgamesh one, in one point of time we might also become immortal ourselves so that's the third category superhuman health so if intelligence strength or physique and also health and the fourth category is also emotional so that's of course an interesting uh, category because most of the people think when they think of superhumans about strength and cognition and these things are also easy measurable but it's different if you want to improve your emotional skills so how can you read the emotion of another other person but also maybe come up with um, also reacting in the kind in the best way and I think of Robin Williams not as the real life person but as his character in the movie Good Will Hunting. And also, if we stay with movies, you could not only have boost your emotional capabilities, but you can also, of course, expand your spiritual capabilities. Think of Gandalf. And it's even more difficult to comprehend and also to quantify and to measure how 
do you want to boost your spiritual capabilities? And also think about morality. Uh, and I like to use the example of Brave New World, the book uh, written by Aldous Huxley. But it also gets into another thing like is, um, is our superhuman abilities, they're maybe good for an individual, but are they good for society or vice versa? In the case of Brave New World, there is, you might say, a good morality, there are no crimes or violence. But there are also no art, religion, uh, free speech, ideas, creativity. So that's one of the ethical dilemmas you will learn more over about in my, uh, on my website, Superhuman Talks. And the last category is that we also can think of superhuman uh, abilities and they have new senses or extra senses. This is Neil Harmonson is an excellent example. He's a cyborg artist and he has a implant in which he can also hear colors because he is born colorblind. But instead of our usual spectrum, he can also see or hear infrared and ultraviolet. So he in a way has extended his senses. He has, he has superhuman senses. So these are the categories ranging from intelligence and strength to emotional spiritual they are more difficult to comprehend and to measure and all maybe also if you can measure it you can ask questions how can you amplify or better it uh, morality and new senses so there are a lot of abilities and if you have any more ideas about superhuman about a superhuman category please let me know of course so what are the main sources of superhuman technologies and sciences? And you might think of the Paralympics, like the super athletes with prothesis. And you might think of the army. That's also not strange because DARPA in the United States, they're also working on these kinds of radical breakthrough technologies. And also Vladimir Putin has said that the science of genetic modification might be more dangerous than the atomic bomb uh, because you can have genetically modified super soldiers but it might surprise you the most common um, source of superhuman abilities are medical innovation and medical technologies uh, best examples plastic surgery that was used in the beginning in the beginning of the 19th century to help soldiers uh, when they got back from the war with without ears or noses and they were held with plastic surgery. And nowadays, plastic surgery is mainly used to improve ourselves. And we can see the same thing happen for all kinds of technologies. Think of pharmaceuticals. Uh, I talked about nootropics. Maybe you also think of Ritalin. Uh, exoskeletons, they're also not only used by people who are par paralyzed, but also by the uh, army, uh, genetic modification, prothesis, brain implants, all these technologies my jump from healing to improving. So that's one of the most important source of superhuman technologies and superhuman abilities. Thank you for watching this talk. I talked about the definition of superhuman, also with the apples of Gilgamesh and history. Uh, I talked about seven categories of superhuman abilities and I talked about the main source of superhuman technology. So if you want to know more, uh, I have a blog, I have a YouTube channel on superhumantalks.com. There you can also find a free download uh, if you're interested. And also more in-depth knowledge about this topic, but also human augmentation, human enhancement, transhumanism. Um, in-depth knowledge if you want to book me for a consultancy session, a keynote, a webinar. You can go to superhumantalks.com.